So I'm Greg. I uh, am the executive director and one of the founders of 18F. Um, and for those who don't know, I'll describe 18F. We, we are housed at GSA. We are a fee for services production floor inside the federal government. Um, to be clear, when I say production floor, we build software generally. We're a digital services team inside the federal government. And being a fee for service, um, and, and, and I want to, you know, reiterate, it's, these are federal employees. We, you know, and when I say production floor, it's not just consulting advice, it's actual developers, designers, UX people, 508 specialists, things like that. Um, and procurement had a lot to do with why we went to build that. Um, but as I, I'll briefly talk about, we started roughly in January of 2014. We were actually officially announced in March of 2014. Um, and we have been feverishly trying to improve the hiring processes, the software deployment process, um, and frankly, every other organizational function you can imagine. And Brian mentioned this, um, to be, really be agile, um, there's, there's a saying in agile that it's cross-functional teams. Uh, to accomplish things. Uh, and the really reality is to do Agile in the federal government, that cross-functional team is not just designers, developers, and technical people, but it's finance, it's uh, hiring, it's everything you can, every single group within government that touches a project, which is almost all of them if you think about it, um, need to become Agile themselves, particularly uh, acquisitions. And, and so one of the things that we focused on was, um, is acquisitions, and mainly because the demand demand for 18F services for us to build for other agencies who can engage with us through an IAA um, interagency agreement is through the roof. I've, I've, never seen, I've, I've never seen anything like this where um, so many people want so many services for us. It, it's actually quite frustrating and sad that we can't help everybody. Um, it also is direct evidence to something more dramatic, which is direct evidence that we have a failed marketplace. And, I, and, I, and I'm so encouraged by everybody being here today because I think other people recognize that too. Um, and to me, it's important to sort of acknowledge that, that there's program offices across government that are desperately seeking this type of agile acquisition processes to be able to quickly get to services they need. Um, and here we have all these people that can now like start working together to deliver it. So it's, it's, it's very awesome. So there's, a, there's this failed marketplace that, that we want to address. And now I'm going to go back in time a little bit because the creation of 18F uh, really goes back to um, the uh, presidential, I was a presidential innovation fellows. And what my team was actually the innovation and procurement team. Um, we worked on a product called RFP Easy. And I'm just, since there are so many, how, how many people had heard of RFP Easy? And let's all be honest with each other. How many people had a negative impression of RFP Easy? Oh, there were, I interviewed a lot more people that had negative impressions than that. You guys are being very kind. Come on, let's get honest. All right, so um, what was interesting about RFP EZ in, in my time as a Presidential Innovation Fellow is uh, we started off, uh, the first round had built, built RFP EZ as a test, right? It's a pilot. It's to explore and, and to, to cultivate new ideas and to see what's working. It worked wonderfully in the marketplace. In fact, if anything, it like overwhelmingly proved the value of a targeted market place. If you, if you target the right companies and cultivate a marketplace properly, you're going to get excellent results. Those results were quality deliveries for less cost. Um, and it was amazingly successful with that. It was um, not widely accepted throughout the uh, acquisition community and procurement community. Um, we, we spent a lot of our time trying to convince people to work with us in, uh, on this project. Um, it was a tremendous amount of time. But what was interesting is the learning lessons of why that was. Um, and, and, and also watching some of procurements go through RFP EZ. And the, the first thing that I noticed was the easiest way to get people to work with us to put their procurements through RFP EZ so we could test these pilots was to offer our advice as consultants and help them build a statement of work. Now, this wasn't exactly what our intentions were, but we found that there was such a need for IT solution architects to provide advice and help in building out a statement of work that there was a problem there, there was a gap, something was mission. Missing. The other thing was, in um, two, two projects that went through RFP EZ, very similar size, very similar uh, amount of money, and very similar technologies, uh, both went through the process. Uh, one got delivered, uh, listed, and awarded within two weeks, which was awesome, and uh, another listed and got awarded in three months. 
And for these small dollar buys that those were, that was way too long. Um, I could tell you that um, it wasn't the software's fault necessarily. People, people wanted to, to talk about that. Using the same software, we had two dramatic results. What was the difference? Well, the difference was practice, right? It was the skills of the people actually using the tool. And, and that was dramatically different. There were people that were experienced in IT services buying that we were talking with. And there were other people that it was their first time and they weren't experienced with it. They were more comfortable with like commodity buying. And so, I, you know, for the practice standpoint, that's what I see this group at USDS and Tracy, like this is to me the beginning of this great movement where everyone starts sharing like best practices. So across all different types of buying, we can all start to get them right. And this is probably the most important thing that everyone sort of remember that this is a skill and when you hear people talk about agile methodologies and things like that, agile methodologies are learning methodologies, nothing more. It just, it's a rapid way to learn. And this is a great way to start for that. Um, I can tell you what 18F, what we did was um, we, we had an opportunity to, to build 18F, which would have been a production floor on the inside. And right around the time of healthcare.gov, people were asking me, you know, procurement um, was a major factor in, in hurting healthcare.gov. What do we do to fix procurement? And, and my answer from my experience was fix hiring, that we needed to bring in solution architects, software, people who really have built out systems in a modular way into government so that they can advise from within. And that was really the spirit of, of us getting started with hiring and building out 18F. We always knew it would end with procurement or acquisitions. Uh, the reason we knew that is if we were successful in building products and created a demand for our products, the only way to scale this would be to get to vendors outside of government. I mean, perfectly great vendors. Like we keep talking about at 18F that we use best practices in the commercial world. We didn't invent any of these things, right? We're sort of masters of the obvious in many ways. In fact, what we're really doing is, is the way to scale this is to go reach out to these vendors that know how to do this correctly and bring them in. But a big change has to happen internally. We can't do finance the way we do finance. You can't approve financial things on requirements three years ago and expect those to be relevant today. You can't do hiring and all of these things the way we've been doing, take months. Um, we've been able to reduce the hiring process to six to eight weeks. That's down from six to nine months. We've been able to reduce the software deployment process from six to 14 months to one to six weeks. Um, these are things we now want to scale, right? And, and, and how this scales is through acquisitions, procurement and best practices in doing this. Um, we build a procurement team because there are tools that are gonna be needed. Um, so one of our teams works with Oasis Acquisition Vehicle and we're building experimental tools that we think will be able to work with other acquisition vehicles. We also built a team called ATNF Consulting. This is the team that really directly addresses what I was getting to with the solution architects. ATNF Consulting um, recently worked with an agency and what they do is they go in from a high level, think of it as like a high level consultancy. They go and they look at the broad picture. We, get, we bring in some UX designers or some design thinking teams. We do some design thinking exercises and really get the agency to think differently about their procurement. Additionally, we don't believe that work begins at the beginning of a procurement. We actually think you should pilot and test things prior to actually going to acquisitions or procurement. And so in one of our cases, we had a, a, a uh, agency who was going to spend about $80 million on a project um, to replace a legacy system because this system was going to be important for another system they were building in the future. Um, and their premise, their unknown, they, they didn't know, they just figured they're going to have to replace it because it's an older, older system. Our, our solutions architect was able to pilot something in four weeks that proved that their system could handle the load and actually reduce the cost of that to just millions instead of you know, 80 million. So it's conservatively going to save them anywhere between 50 to 70 percent on that acquisition. Uh, this type of upfront work is great. It's also not, sh shouldn't be a surprise, there's a very common thing in software development um, and it's called the cone of uncertainty. In the beginning of any project, um, about 25% to 30% of that project, there's all sorts of estimates. And so they've done studies where they track people's estimates on cost and, and basically you are guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be widely incorrect on your estimates in the very beginning. And so no one should feel bad that we get this wrong. What ends up happening, I think, in the federal government is we take that uncertainty, we turn it into risk, and our vendors do this too, right? And they bloat the price because of all the different possibilities. We are now piloting acquisitions where we are turning over to vendors pilots 
actual examples of code bases in which they can bring down the uncertainty, saving tremendous money when it comes to actually doing the acquisition. So this team, 18F Consulting, is really a group of solution architects. It's a group of project managers. Um, we'll be aligning with USDS. Um, you, hopefully, uh, other contracts officers. We hope to house or host a lot of contracts officer as this team grows. Um, but we're in our infancy, and, and as I said before, you know, this is the year where 18F scales. Um, and so we, we hope to have your help in doing that. And finally, the other thing was sort of a return to RFP EZ in the marketplace. Um, we, we felt strongly that for 18F consulting, which, or, or 18F in general, we, you know, we're our own systems integrator. We don't need vendors to tell us how to build our platforms out or to scale our platforms or do the software. And we provide all of our own solutions architect work on the platforms we need. But we do need lots of work done, and our clients need lots of work done. And so we needed a fast way that we could count on getting to uh, vendors, qualified vendors, to, to build out our systems, or at least modules or components of our system. And so uh, we built out uh, recently, about three weeks ago-ish, I think, it was, um, we had an industry day for our um, Agile BPA, or Digital Services Agile BPA, and the goal of it is to create a BPA off of Schedule 70, invite companies in, in order for them to get into the BPA, we don't want them to build a 25 page document to tell us how great they are. They actually are gonna build something for us. That's, we're gonna give them 24 hours in the case of like a group of developers or companies of developers, they're actually gonna come build a website and, and post it in a code repository that's open source to prove and show transparently the different type of work that's being done. Um, when they eventually, when they get into the the BPA, or it really, and I'm going to stop using the word BPA because it's such a government thing, but to me, it's a marketplace, right? Um, and so, when they get into our marketplace, we plan to cultivate that marketplace. In fact, that marketplace will be at its worst on day one. And this is another thing I've noticed inside acquisition, inside the federal government. It seems like we work very hard to get to an award, and then everybody goes like drops the mic and they're like done, right? We're out of here, and and. Um, and really, that's just the beginning, right? It, the, your, your, your marketplace should be at its worst at that moment. In fact, I don't expect our marketplace to be all that great until probably year three. That year three is enough where we've gotten to know a lot of the, know a lot of the vendors on the marketplace and kicked them out. Um, the, we plan to keep the, pro, the very high standards to stay in and at least twice a year compete to let new competition in. And this is how you cultivate a great place and, and, and the vendors will be responsible, responsible to the, responsive to this, I promise, mainly because we're the buyers. We actually have the leverage here. So um, that Agile BPA is, is uh, getting under, underway. We're working on uh, the alpha version on it. We are building it in an Agile way. So we are actually gonna first release the first version that 18F can use it for itself and its clients. Um, and then once we show signs of success, we will may, uh, release a second one, one we call beta, which will be for uh, government-wide access. Um, and because the focus of this is so much on how you use it and it being a micro marketplace, um, we want to be able to qualify uh, really program offices and contract officers to be able to use it so that you know marketplace stays effective as long as everyone using that marketplace does it in a quality manner and in the same way and I'll end on this note because a lot of people don't understand when I say well what do you mean how do you use it and I'll get very wonky and please follow me on this but um, in in the agile world you know agile is really a big word and, and there's lots of different practices of Agile and there's lots of different ways to do it. And there's lots of people that are doing Agile that's not really Agile at all. It's sort of like a chaotic waterfall process where they allow changes whenever someone asks for it. Um, Agile's actually very disciplined, but there's many different disciplines within that world. And this marketplace is specifically suited to the way 18F builds. And what we're looking for, specifically companies that can be re responsive immediately um, and spin up a team quickly, uh, to help build a module, in, it, uh, we won't contract anything for over a year. We'll never do anything over two million um, as for a single contract. Um, in fact, we'll probably be in the three to nine month range from a time standpoint and spin it up, build a module, and then we'll contract with you again for, with a task order to build the next module and just practice using it that way. Now, if people come in and use this marketplace and start doing waterfall projects. It would be a disaster 
for the marketplace. This marketplace is specifically only for this type of agile buying. Second is we're doing only time and materials. There are companies out there uh, that do agile work and they'll do it firm fixed price. Now, setting aside the philosophical differences I have with being able to do agile in a firm fixed price world, there are people that do it and that's great. Their operations, their business model and everything is designed specifically for that and they deserve another marketplace, right? Those companies actually shouldn't even be in the marketplace where agile time and material companies are competing because they have a different operations model and a business model. And we have to get that fine tuned and knowledgeable about our marketplaces. And oh, by the way, these are the same methodologies as how you build a great workforce, right? You have to really know your people and cultivate it. So I'll stop there and answer questions after Mark goes. Thank you very much.